Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the correct views. Sam I B. DeGangie doing political commentary for the media speaks. And friends, uh, if you're on high def, you're, you're up there. Uh, those of you live streaming directly off the webcam, I mention that because as you hit subscribe and hit share, which I need you to do now, I need that very much, so please do. As you do that, um, I'm going to be trying to do things with the high def in terms of production because if I have acquired some video software and hopefully I will be able to do the magic uh, that I used to do back in the day. Paul Joseph Watson, Prison Planet, China says Russia has humiliated arrogant USA with a simulated attack on warship. Now, let me go ahead and uh, as I go to screen share here, let, uh, I'll scan through the article for those of you that are watching it on the uh, TV behind me or on uh, the streaming live. Here's what we're dealing with. China is sort of acting here like the the little twerp that would egg on the school bully. I'm not one of the people that are hating Putin because I like Obama in any way. It's just that it's the mind-blowingly obvious to me that Vladimir Putin is vying for the best spot on the New World Order map in much the same way that and that you can see on the TV here the screen them uh, buzzing us this is like them egging on what could very easy be a new, easily turn into a nuclear war <clears throat> that is Russia egging on the United States now we are in international waters there we are permitted in every way to do this now keep in mind, Russia is too, but it is not a good idea to deliberately egg on another country and see if you can provoke them into doing something which could spark an international conflict. Because in this day and age, international conflicts can include things such as uh, launching of nuclear missiles. They can include shooting down a warplane that maybe didn't break the law, but broke the essence of the law. And these kinds of things can spiral out of control rather quickly. And I mention it because this is bad, bad news. Does this have to do with bad leadership from Obama? Yeah. Does it have to do with NATO intervening where it shouldn't be? It certainly does. However, it also has to do with a very New World Order-minded Putin who isn't against the New World Order. You can find this in many, many uh, commentaries from other people other than me. This is a matter of Putin vying for his spot in the New World Order, order and making the world just as unstable as Obama has, as Bush has, as Blair and Cameron has. This, that's all that this is. Please, friends, listen. The mouthpiece for the ruling Chinese Communist Party asserts that Russia humiliated an arrogant United States with its warplane passes near a U.S. Mi missile destroyer in the Baltic Sea on Tuesday an incident that the Pentagon described as a simulated attack. Video released by the U.S. military yesterday shows two Sukhoi Su-24 warplanes conducting repeated close air attack passes over the U.S. guided missile destroyer, which was located about seven nautical miles away from Russian territory. Now, it was well known that America was going to be in these waters. It was not something that was a, a surprise. This was done in order to provoke a reply from the United States. And sooner or later, they're going to get that reply. And it's not going to be pretty, friends. Not, it's not going to be pretty at all. 
The U.S. military officials later described the maneuvers as some of the most aggressive interactions in recent memory. Um, and Moscow, it says, will continue to use military provocations to challenge Washington. This is bad news, friends. We're talking about two nuclear-armed nations, which two nuclear-armed nations, which are led by some of the most vile, despicable people that you have ever heard of. Both provoking the other with China as like the ringleader. And then you wonder why um, Trump has such a wide support when he's saying that, you know, China is part of the problem in the world. They take jobs by making their citizens all but destitute. And then help provoke what could be the most devastating wars in all of recorded history. And what, what if, if China was to come out on top of this, how would, how would that be? Uh, a 1% rolling with a bunch of slaves like you see now. Make no, make no mistake about it. The slave trade is being fed daily. It's alive and well in the way that we send our jobs away from good paying jobs here we send to slaves in China who work for basically to quote Jello by offer a bowl of rice a day. This, this, this is what we've allowed to happen through trade deals and now the the beast that we have fed China with all of our power and all of our jobs and all of our influence is now using all of that against us friends. And this is from the uh, Washington Examiner I love this. Uh, Rand Paul says convention rules are backfiring on the GOP. What's funny about this is that is exactly what is happening. A lot of people forget that um, Ron Paul was cheated out of the nomination by a rule change that was not declared until after it was well into the process. And they changed the rule to prevent Ron Paul from getting his, his fair his fair. Uh, stance in that election in a way. Well, now they want to change the rules back because the rules they have don't allow them to nominate anybody who the people haven't already overwhelmingly selected. you got to remember that Ron Paul was openly cheated in Iowa. He was cheated throughout his entire run. One of the faults with Ron Paul was that he was way too polite to call it out. Well, the very rules that they used to try to cheat Ron Paul are now being, uh, they're trying to flip them around and do the exact opposite so that they can cheat Donald Trump. So listen to this. This is from Louder with Crowder. Uh, excuse me, I got there and clicked the wrong damn tab. Washington Examiner, Crowder's coming up. Um, Ex-White House hopeful Senator Rand Paul suggested Tuesday that the GOP establishment shot itself in the foot in the 2012, I said 08, I meant 2012, when the Republican National Convention Standing Rules Committee raised the threshold in what is known as Rule 40B. Um, again, I just went over what that was. It was a disaster. Under Rule 40B, a candidate for president must win a majority of the delegates in eight or more states, even though the party cheats them out of it like they did Ron Paul, to be eligible for the nomination. The number of states was adjusted from five to eight in 2012 to prevent Paul's father, then Texas Congressman Ron Paul, from having his votes counted. In other words, they stole his votes. But now that Republicans are desperately looking for another candidate to defeat frontrunner Donald Trump, who the people have chosen in even greater numbers than they did Ron Paul, Republicans seem to be saying that it's okay to accept a candidate who hasn't won eight states, Paul said. In 2012, when my dad was running, they made a special rule that said that you can't be nominated unless you win eight states. And that, they didn't count as votes, the Kentucky senator explained on MSNBC. But it's interesting now, if you talk to all of the Republican establishment, they're saying, oh yeah, your votes can be counted. And he said, this is a big deal, because think about it, Kasich's votes cannot be counted, he added. Under Rule 40, which is what they cheated Ron Paul with, they should not be counted. And if it was Ron Paul, they were counted. They were not counted in 2012. 
But this year they want to do the opposite. And we've talked about this before. This is the dishonesty that is extant in the Republican Party today. And it's why so many people have such a negative outlook concerning the, um, and the both parties for that matter. But uh, the Republicans which claim to stand on honesty and really are far from it. Uh, Louder with Crowder debunk, debunking the myth that right-wing America makes Islam worse. We're gonna, we have two stories here on the joys of the religion of peace here. Um, it says, we need to modify the expression, the only certainties in life are death and taxes. Here it's perhaps we should append, amend, up, excuse me, perhaps we should append to read, there's nothing more certain than leftists trying to blame all of the world's problems on the right. The same ideology with laws abortions as a brave choice, the same ideology that says a woman is anyone who wants to be a woman despite who they are still in fact biologically male, <clears throat> the same ideology that denounces capitalism, the most effective way to bring people out of poverty, while claiming to be champions of the poor, the same ideology with Russia, with which rushes to blame mankind for climate change, has the hotspot to blame right-wing America for making Islamists into terrorists. So let's go here real quick. One, Islam was violent before the United States. Let's look at this. It has been violent throughout the existence of the United States, and it will be violent should the United States ever cease to exist. As leftists love to tell you while they're trying to throw all religion under the skull-crushing tanks of Islam, all religion is crap. Just look at the Crusades. Alright friends, and I've covered this before, let's take a good look at the Crusades. Why did the Crusades happen? Was it because Whitey hated the Islamic? Or the Crusades are commonly used to blame Christianity, mainly Catholicism, for invading the peaceful and learned Muslim-controlled countries. If you listen to a leftist, he, she, or Z will tell you that the Crusaders just rode into it for the heck of it to kill Muslims, just to kill them for sport. This was long before AR-15s, mind you, so people were generally killed with blades. But an examination of the Crusades, and there's a link here, mainly the cause of them points a paint story with a different brush. For starters, the Crusades to the West were in every way defensive wars. They were a direct response to Muslim aggression an attempt to turn back or defend against Muslim conquest in Christian lands. In other words, Muslims were coming in and they were forcing, giving you no choice, demanding that you become Muslim. And if you didn't become Muslim, you were slaughtered. This happened in enough areas that what you ran into was Either the Christians defended themselves, or Christianity was going to be utterly wiped out, as was every other religion which they didn't like. And if you doubt this, then again, let's remember, let's look at Egypt. They were clearly not Muslim. Ra, the, the Sphinx, etc., etc. How do you think they became Muslim? Because they did so at the end of a sword, they had no choice. It said, um, Christians, it goes on, in the, 7th, in the 11th century were not paranoid fanatics. Muslims really were gunning for them. They were, um, from the time of Muhammad, the means of Muslim expansion was always the sword. In other words, you had no choice. Muslim thought divides the world into two spheres, the adobe of Islam and the adobe of war. Christianity, and for that matter, any other non-Muslim religion, has no abode. Christians and Jews can be tolerated within a Muslim state under Muslim rule, but in tradition or Islam, Christian and Jewish, sta Jewish states must be destroyed and their lands conquered. 
So, it goes on, with enormous energy, the warriors of Islam struck out against Christians shortly after Muhammad's death. They were extremely successful. Palestine, Syria, and Egypt were all ruined by Islam. They were once the most heavily Christian areas in the world, and they, were qu they quickly succumbed. By the 8th century, Muslim armies had conquered all Christian North Africa and Spain. In the 11th century, the Seljuk Turks conquered Asia Minor, which is now Turkey, which had been Christian since the time of St. Paul. The old Roman Empire, known to modern historians as the Byzantine Empire, was reduced to little more than Greece. In desperation, the Emperor of Constantinople sent word to the Christians of Western Europe asking them to aid their sisters in the East. I'm giving you a history lesson here. What are you learning? What are you understanding? The Crusades were not Christians out to go ahead and beat everyone to death. And it wasn't out to, it wasn't a war on Muslims. The Crusades were the response to a Muslim war on Christianity and everyone else who wasn't Muslim. That is what gave birth to the Crusades, it says. They were not the brainchild of an ambitious pope or a rapturous knights, but a response to more than four centuries, four hundred years of conquest in which Muslims had already captured two-thirds of the old Christian world at some point, Christianity as a faith and as a culture had to defend itself or be subdued by Islam. The Crusades were that defense. Two, Islam was entirely been spread through violence and breeding. Despite the myth that Muslims spout about it being the fastest growing religion, it is not. There's a link here for it. Turns out media quotes are quite, our, our quotes are not fact. Somebody should tell them, and it certainly isn't growing by conversion. It grows by dominance, rape, and violence. Look no further than how Islam is being spread today. It's important because the historical timeline provides context long before America. See again, the first point we just went over. Islam says that you must convert people. And if you are not converted, then you are not welcome. You are a candidate, as my computer tries to free up, you are a candidate to get your head cut off. That's what you are. You, you don't have a choice in Islam, the religion of peace. Slay the idolaters wherever you find them. Arrest them, besiege them, and lie in ambush everywhere, says the religion of peace. If they repent and take to prayer, that is, become Islamic, and render their alms levy, allow them to go their way. God is forgiving and merciful. This is from Surah 9.5. In other words, convert or die. Fight against those, it says, to whom the scripture were given as believe in neither God nor the last day, who do not forbid what God his messenger has forbidden and who do not embrace the true faith, unto whom pay tribute out of the hand, and utterly be subdued. Pseudo 959. These, and there's other references within the article. I don't want to lose everyone who's waiting for the later stories as well. But I do believe it's important to note here the overreach. The, 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 the bigger picture here is that a lot of the slaughtering and killing that has been blamed on other cultures against Islam was done because of what Islam had done to other cultures. They are the ones who set up their own villages and demand the Sharia that is strict adherence to the most, I would argue, evil of interpretations of any religion ever. And if you are not someone who is in favor of that, then you have no place in Islam. You are worth, worthless. And the fact that this is being talked about today in some circles is somehow considered evil or bad or you're anti-Islam. You are not anti-Islam if you are against this sort of thought. You are simply pro-freedom. And plain and simple. Um, we have, if my computer will unfreeze, we have sources with it horror stories of people that have survived the most 
agonizing, demonic, demoralizing rapes ever. And this is not a uh, tirade against Islam, so much as it is a warning against subscribing to the pity party. The, oh, it looks like these people have been demonized by Christians throughout history. That's why they're angry today. That's not true. That's not true at all. They were demonized due to things that they were causing to happen. And by conquering people without giving them any choice whatsoever. And again, you're not supposed to mention that today. You're not supposed to talk about that today. But I think that if you mention that, you're going to get